Intel's back, baby, and the 3080 Ti had another leak. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So first starting off with the 3080 Ti, a leaked benchmark was posted online by Twitter user Harukaze5719 and this leaked benchmark shows the RTX 3080 Ti in 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme versus an RTX 3080 and an RTX 3090. If we go ahead and take a look at the chart here, you can see that it scores about 300 points more than the RTX 3080, yet it's actually a thousand points behind the RTX 3090. And I find that a little bit surprising because, you know, if we take a look at what we know so far about the RTX 3080 Ti's specs. It's supposed to have the same FP32 core or CUDA core count as the RTX 3090, and the only real difference is that it should be, you know, a little bit less bandwidth and memory. So instead of the 24 gigabytes on the 3090, it should have 20 gigabytes, and instead of having over 900 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, it should have only 760 gigabytes per second. And you know, personally, I didn't think that, that would make a big difference in terms of performance, but it looks like if this does turn out to be true that, you know, depending on what type of benchmark or game that you run, it actually could have a pretty significant difference. So so I was expecting the RTX 3080 Ti to be about 2% slower than the RTX 3090 and you know I still do believe that it's not going to be too much slower than the 3090 on average but it looks like at least when it comes to benchmarks like this it, again if this does turn out to be true well then the RTX 3080 Ti could actually end up only being a little bit faster than the RTX 3080 which could hurt its value even further I mean already at thousand dollars that's 42% more expensive than the RTX 3080 and to only get let's say 8% more performance doesn't look good anyway so if we only end up getting say 5% more performance on average or even less, well then that's going to make the RTX 3080 Ti a lot less worth it as a purchase when you compare it to the 3080. Now of course we're not taking into account the 20 gigabytes of VRAM which is two times more than the RTX 3080 so of course you know maybe it's not going to be worth it when it comes to gaming but if you do have some sort of professional application that can take advantage of that 20 gigabytes of VRAM it's certainly going to be a much better option than the RTX 3090 in that regards. But we'll just have to wait and see what the official benchmarks say when it launches hopefully sometime in January. Now moving on to the i9-11900K, there seems to be an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark that was leaked online by Twitter user Tom Appizak, which by the way there will be links to all my sources in the description below as always, but if we go ahead and we take a look at the chart here, we can see that the i9-11900K at 1080p crazy with an RTX 2080 Ti, it gets a score of 6,200 points. Now taking a look at the best result from an i9-10900K, that one gets a score of 5,800 points, so there's definitely an improvement there, though it looks like it only comes to an improvement of around 7%, which is a little bit surprising because this new processor coming out from Intel should be a significant step forward in terms of its IPC. Now, I've heard anything from around 15% better IPC upwards of 20 to 25% better IPC, and personally, I'm thinking that we're going to see something between 15 to 18% of an increase in terms of the instructions per clock. Now, of course, that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to translate 100% into gaming, but I think that these ashes of the singularity leaks aren't 100% representative of what the average is typically going to be when this processor comes out. So what I'm expecting out of this i9-11900K is that it's going to take back the gaming crown from AMD and taking a look at these results only a 7% increase would actually only put it on par with the Ryzen 7 5800X roughly. So I think that we're going to see better results out of this processor once everything gets finalized and it does come out which it looks like it should be coming out sometime in quarter 1 2021 or at least that's what Intel's hoping for. Now, it might not actually meet that goal. They might end up being quarter two or even quarter three, but hopefully it does come out by then because Intel does desperately need a new processor out on the market. Now, of course, even if they do end up taking back the gaming crown, that will be very impressive. However, they're going to be at a significant core disadvantage, and here's where I have a big issue with this 11900K. So, if we take a look at another leak from Harukaze5719, we can see that he posted the actual specs of the 11900K, and it's supposed to have eight cores and 16 threads, a single core boost up to 5.3 gigahertz, which is impressive because that's matching, you know, their previous 10900K in terms of the max single core boost, and it's doing it with a much stronger IPC, so that's good to see, and the all core boost is 4.8 gigahertz, so that's a little bit down, but not too much, and it only has 16 megabytes of cache versus the 20 megabytes of cache, but, you know, as impressive as all that stuff is, there's one thing that sticks out to me big time, and that's the fact that this i9 processor that's replacing the previous i9 processor is now 8 cores instead of 10 cores, so 
that's a big disappointment because I was expecting that maybe they'd be moving forward from 10 cores to 12 cores to eventually 16 cores so they could eventually match AMD, but it looks like they're not quite there yet. And on top of that, I'm hearing that supposedly this new processor could be drawing a lot of power as well. So it looks like, unfortunately, even if they do end up taking back the gaming crown, AMD is going to have a huge advantage in terms of core count. And all AMD really has to do at that point is drop their prices. And, you know, maybe AMD will lose by like 5% or even upwards of 10% in gaming. But if the prices are much better and you can get far more core as well, that's going to put AMD in a very strong position once again. And then shortly thereafter, I'm expecting, you know, probably sometime by the end of this year, AMD is going to have their DDR5 platform out with their Ryzen 6000 series processors. So I think Intel needs to get working on their 10 nanometer processors fast. They need to get them out and they need to beef up their core counts because if they don't do so, they're going to find themselves continuing to lag behind. And even when they get those 10 nanometer processors out, I think they really need to work on getting out faster than they currently are because, you know, AMD is going to be moving to five nanometers soon. And then shortly after that, they should be moving to five nanometer plus and then three nanometers. So, you know, by the time Intel gets their 10 nanometer processors out, it could be 10 nanometer versus five nanometers. Then by the time they get seven nanometer out, they could be going against TSMC's three nanometer uh, process. So, you know, although they aren't directly comparable, you can expect that the five nanometer process from TSMC will likely be able to beat the 10 nanometer process from Intel. I'm very, very confident in that. And similarly, the three nanometer process from TSMC will probably be able to beat Intel's seven nanometer process, at least in terms of density. So yeah, overall, it looks like if you want the fastest gaming processor on the market, Intel will probably have you covered at least for the short term, but you know, they're going to be in a boatload of trouble if they don't pick things up fast. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these 11900K and 3080Ti leaks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.